built into our philosophy of we bet, we, my wife and I, we kind of joke about this, we bet on all the ponies. We want them all to come all the way around the track and get to the finish line. Now, some may come first, some may come second. The, the better looking horse might come in third. But we want them all to get to the finish line and then we can sort that out. Um, and so we've been very active under CDA and NDA with quite a number of very large and, and very small uh, pharma companies um, because you never quite know what's going to happen. Programs have been canceled, programs have been sold, programs have put, been uh, reprioritized for business purposes and then put back on the burner. We're dealing with one of those right now. Um, so. Yes, we've had a part in all of this. I've been to Italy three or four times, once with a family, um, because this, this family had some uh, communication challenges and some understanding. I said, I want, I want to help you through the process, but at the same time, from, with my foundation hat on, I wanted to uh, understand what they go through. I wanted to see how the consent and the explanation was given to this family. Where were they living? What was the experience? Because if we're going to send families so, or refer families somewhere, um, we, we want to um, we want to experience that and know what their journey is. Don't just buy a ticket to Milan and assume everything is good. We donated a microwave oven at the at the, the apartments that they were putting these families in. You know at least the American families, we're used to having a microwave. If, if you don't have a full kitchen, you've got to have a microwave, right? They had a little hot plate, which was nice, but, but you know, American families want a microwave, want to heat something up or whatever. So even basic, getting them cell phones. So I've kind of digressed from your question a little bit, but, but all of those pieces and all those interactions defining, helping to define clinical trials, we, um, as part of our philosophy of prioritizing families, we don't just bring them to a family conference, we visit them literally around the world. Whenever we travel, you know, this is a U.S. conference, but we travel to some international conferences or we've done some family conferences internationally. We want to meet those families in their homes, in their environment, see how, they, how they're coping with uh, MLD. From that, we're able to understand the disease, perhaps not scientifically enough to go, uh, I'm pointing this way because that's where the poster session is, uh, but perhaps you know, not able to write a whole poster on that with all the scientific parameters, but we know what happens with this disease because we've interacted with families. We take that back to the pharma companies. Um, one particular company, well-known, you know, very competent company, set up their, um, their criteria for how they were going to evaluate the end of their trial. And they said, hey, this has been published, this is what we've decided, it's easy to measure, you know, so that they'll get good data. And we said, time out. It says, that's not what happens. <laughs> that is not, you know, we've been around families, that is not what happens. And so instead of them spending months or years and millions of dollars and not, you know, in, enrolling families, uh, they wouldn't get the data that they needed. And so we're able to influence from a real hands-on perspective. Likewise, uh, through the review process, knowing when and where to, uh, and, and having the trust and the respect of the, uh, the regulatory agencies and, and the various people that are contributing, the documents and so on. We're doing this in newborn screening as well. Uh, the folks that are doing the technical reviews. Um, having those relationships in place, investing years and years, meeting people, understanding processes, not just going to the finish line, but running the laps before that. As, as we do that, we're able to be much better prepared and, and um, provide the kind of responses that the agencies or the, the regulatory review boards or whatever are, are looking for. So that's been our philosophy. So if, if I had to go back and list every place we've been involved, I mean, it's been recruiting, defining the trials, it's been just encouraging the researchers when things aren't going quite right or because they get a lot of no's on the way too. They try things, doesn't work. They try something else, doesn't work. Um, helping uh, burden of care studies, helping them to understand uh, and to expand those. It's not just what does it cost you to go to the drugstore and you know go go get an MRI or whatever. Did you have to have your home remodeled because you've now got a child in a wheelchair? Oh wait, those wheelchairs took six months to get to you, and now it's the wrong size, right? So how do we fix that? How do we get them services in, in schools? All those things to get those families through this process, and in enrolling families in trials. That's I think we're blessed. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say we're blessed 
to have families to enroll in trials, and I don't mean that in the way that we wish MLD on anybody, but we, um, when a family is diagnosed with MLD, more often than not, they want to know about clinical trials. So the limiting factor there is how, how quickly, how often our families uh, diagnosed. But you want, need to make sure they have the right diagnosis. We get a lot of families that say, I've been diagnosed with leukodystrophy. And MLD is one of the more common leukodystrophies, so they assume it's MLD. Um, helping the families that uh, are good, good targets for the therapy, uh, for the clinical trial, uh, expediting them, uh, both by introducing them to the PIs and, and sharing what we know with the PIs in parallel with the families and their doctors talking. Um, and at the same time, those that aren't eligible for clinical trial, then loving on them. So we kind of take them down a different avenue and so on. Um, so, I mean, there's just so many places to be involved. Here we're, you know, I'm recording a video, right? This is about awareness. This is certainly, I'd love for families to see this. That's great. But, but the docs and the professionals and the researchers that are seeing this, there's a whole group of young, we call them young investigators. They're not all that young, but, but folks that we want to be encouraged not just about MLD, but about rare disease as a whole. So we hope that by sh sharing some success and progress, and perhaps what the journey is and what the opportunity is, that we can get more uh, young investigators in the field. Um, you know, the, the old folks are getting the awards at these conferences. We, we, want, we want you to start in your career and, and, you know, half a decade or a decade from now, then you'll be on the podium and then, then you'll be getting the awards for all the many, many things that you've done. So all those things are important. It's not just let's get it on the drugstore shelf. It's, it's just so much more complicated than that. The thing about advocacy organizations is, for the most part, or certainly um, for MLD Foundation, it's longevity. So as biopharma, for example, comes and goes, some of them run out of money or they, they're invested in too many programs and maybe the MLD program is solid but the others are pulling them down, the revenues aren't right, whatever it is. Um, as those companies come and go, as researchers move from institution to industry or back and forth or to, to different places, somebody's got to provide that continuity. We have, we have a, a wonderful researcher in our space who uh, did um, some consulting work on a, on a one-year leave of absence with a pharma company and is now taking a full-time position with pharmas, but what about their data? Now, they still, you know, literally that transition's underway right now, but we will make sure along with her that that data doesn't get just locked up in a filing cabinet or, or actually in this case will be destroyed after five years. We, we just can't allow that. So we provide that longevity um, that, that survives a lot of these things. Companies get acquired. Um, regula uh, regulators, the individuals, uh, well we heard this morning from the FDA, there's a little bit of reorganization going on with you know how they're, they're, they're looking at gene therapies and putting the groups together. We need to provide that continuity through there. So that's another whole part of you know, I, I never even thought about that in terms of how are we contributing to that process. It's just by being here, being there then and being here now is, is very important.